So normally, this is how everything is going to look. Your general duty safety switch will be on, and it's labeled general duty safety switch. That is on. This is your normal operation. Your DC disconnect will be on. This is normal operation. And you will have lights on your screens. So your system will show you how much, how many watts you're generating. This is all normal. So if you ever go out and look at your system during the day, this is how everything would look. So let's say the power goes out. This is how you come across your system. Everything is normal. Your general duty safety switch is on. Your DC disconnect is on. If you open up your SPS, the switch is off. That's normal operating. If the power goes out and you want to be able to use your solar system as an inverter to charge your portable devices, battery, storage, etc., that's standalone. You know, I'm not talking about Tesla power walls or anything. I'm just talking about like portable battery packs that you want to plug in directly to the outlet outside and charge during the day. This is how you do it. So the first thing is you go to your general duty safety switch. You turn that off and you're gonna see the screen start to turn off. So now we stopped generating watts. We're not feeding back into the grid right now. You can see here, you know, nothing going in the grid, no power being generated. All right, step two, after we've turned off the general duty safety switch is to turn on our SPS, secure power supply. All right, and now that we've done that, we're gonna watch and wait for the screen to go to, it'll say something like standalone operation, standalone power. That's what we're looking for. That's how we know the inverter is ready. So it's gonna go through some self tests. And once this is green, and it's gonna be hard to see, but you'll be able to also see on the screen here, it'll say like standalone power. Might see something different in your inverter, but that's what you're looking for. All right, so we're waiting. Standalone operation, perfect, okay? It says standalone operation on the screen. So now we can plug in our devices. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of the devices that I keep on hand for emergencies, and I end up using them when I travel and go camping too, because they're always ready to go. So here is one, and this is made by Goal Zero. It's called the Sherpa 100, and it has USB-C, which is the fastest way to charge this thing, as well as the fastest way to charge phones and iPads, up to 60 watts. You can also plug in two regular USB devices. It has an inverter to power a laptop and a wireless charger for your phone. You can charge six devices at once. You can actually charge even more than that if you use these three-in-one cables. So what you wanna do is you know, grab your power supply. So I'm gonna plug this in, the SPS, that's on. It says standalone power or standalone operation and I'm gonna see if I get a light. Okay, the light is on, so I'm getting power, and I can tell if I'm getting power to here. Right now, there's no wattage coming in, but once I plug in here, it's giving me 36 watts, 43 watts, 50 watts. All right, that's great. I'm charging at almost the max capacity. 50 watts right now, charging this thing up. And while this is charging, I can plug in a bunch of other USB devices to charge my headlamps, my cell phones. Even if you have cell phones that have been disconnected from the network, you know, deactivated for a few years, those can still be used to call 911. So might as well charge those if you have the capacity. But of course, charge the most important things first. And that, to me, that's all your rechargeable lights. And I always recommend rechargeable over battery power because you can only store so many batteries but your ability to generate during the day is unlimited and you don't have to worry about having the wrong battery when you need it. All right, so let's do the same thing over here to the other inverter. All right, so let's do this one more time so we're clear on the instruction. We come across our system. Everything is set up normally. Everything is on. What we're going to do All right, so everything is on, you know, except for the SPS. That inverter stays off normally. You're normally not using that. So we come across here, the general duty safety switch, we turn off. And now we're gonna look at the screen here and we will wait for that to start turning off. It'll, it's gonna drop down to zero watts for power generated. And then 
we're going to turn on the SPS. That stays on. We don't touch the DC disconnect. Now we're going to wait and it should show standalone operation like we have on that one. And now while we're charging one battery device, we can charge a second. So it does its self test, AFCI self test. Next thing should be standalone operation. And for this one, we're going to, this is called the Yeti 400. So we're going to charge our Yeti 400 now while we're charging, you know, the other battery device to get as much use out of this as we can. So standalone operation, we're good. So we can see here that the switch is on and we can do a GFI test. You can only do this when there's power applied. So we can hit test. That should break it. We hit reset and you'll see a red flash and then it'll go green. So even if you can't see the green light, if you do a test, let me move the camera down. All right, so because this light is so hard to see when it's green, what you can do to see if, there, if there's actually power to your GFCI outlet is to hit test, which will only work if there's power to the outlet, if the outlet is alive, and then hit reset. And you'll see a red flash for a moment. For th Watch this light, you'll see a red flash. See that? Okay, we're good. So that's telling us we have power to the outlet. That was just a test. We're gonna plug in here. Okay, so now we've plugged into the outlet. We're going to plug in to our goal zero. This is our portable battery that we wanna charge during the day. And you'll see that it says no input right now, but watch. We plug in and we're getting 70, 20, 30 watts. So there's a couple advantages to using something like this rather than just directly powering your devices from these. The power is gonna fluctuate quite a bit from these panels. So right now, you know, this generating 74 watts, 98, it's gonna change continuously. And that's probably okay for your devices, but it's not great for it. Instead, this is essentially like a line conditioner. So it's feeding in at all different charging rates, as you can see, but the output is going to be consistent. So the output is not moved from four watts. So that's why you want to charge separate batteries, battery storage differently than, you know, just plugging in your individual devices at once. You can do that, but it could damage your devices. And this way you'll have plenty of power for the night. You can get even larger ones of these. You can stack them um, and they're solar compatible. So you can augment the solar generating power with another panel. So even if you don't have solar at your house, you know, so if I take this goal zero panel, for example, and you know, this is a relatively small panel and it's compatible with, you know, both devices, uh, all I do, and you know, the, so you can see the light showing that it does have some power being generated from this panel. And if I'm away from a house, I can bring my solar panels. You can daisy chain, multiple panels together. So instead of charging from the wall, I could charge outside if you know it's a really bad situation, we're not at home. So you have these in your go bag and you're generating power as much as you can during the day. I mean, the energy is free, it's there for the taking. Get as much as you can, harness as much as you can so you can charge your devices during the day and at night. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to put everything back to normal. So once the power goes back on, the grid is back up, we're gonna disconnect from our inverter, turn our inverter off, close the cover for the SPS, and then turn on the general duty safety switch. And now we're gonna wait. Uh, it's gonna click over a few times, it's gonna go through its cycle, and you'll start to see the wattage come back from zero up to whatever your panels are rated at. Make sure this stays on. This is your general duty safety switch again. Your DC disconnect, you never had to do anything with that, so that should just be in a vertical on position. And your SPS, your secure power supply, make sure that is off. It takes a while for it to start generating again, but that will come back to life. And that's the proper procedure to use your solar system as an emergency source of power during the day when you have a power outage. If you would like links to the power storage devices that I recommend, the Yeti 400, the Sherpa 100, I'll put those in the links. And thanks for watching. Hope it helps.